All right, we're talking to Jason Cavallotti. Hi, yeah. Jason. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Now, you're the, the mad scribe behind uh, the final, is that right? Is it okay if I call you mad scribe? Um, sure. By mad, do you mean like cool? <laughs> or like mad as an insane? Now, uh, I saw the trailer, and it looks to me like there's something to offend almost everyone in the movie. That was our intent. So, uh, <laughs> it looks edgy, it looks violent, it looks dark. It um, is. It's, it's, it wasn't intended to offend as much as uh, kind of shine a light on. Uh, you know, the, the premise came from the Columbine event as well as Virginia Tech. And I took a real interest into trying to understand, instead of just being angry about the event, I tried to take an interest in what causes people to go to these lengths. And uh, the final was kind of an analysis, or at least a look at what would send someone over the brink to do such horrible things. It's not, it wasn't really to stand in judgment. We allow the audience to kind of say, you know, well, they were motivated by some people. They were tortured their whole lives. And I was really uh, moved by how little it takes to send some people over the edge and how far you have to, you know, really push someone else to get over that same edge. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a look into those sorts of things. It wasn't really an intent to say, let's go out there and make a movie that's going to be controversial. That just happened naturally. So, uh, yeah, I think, you know, um, we did a nice job of trying to tell a real story about real people as opposed to just having horrific events that took place on screen to visually, you know, stimulate someone or to turn someone off or to be gory for that event. So we really tried to tell, uh, you know, a good story. Now, when you pitched the story, did you have to pitch it to Agora Entertainment, or did they come to you saying, we want a story like this? How well, uh, that was an easy pitch, because I basically ran Agora Entertainment, so <laughs> I pitched it to myself. <laughs> I and I it. agreed with what I said. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's helpful. I greenlit my own project. You know, I did talk to my partners about it. We did discuss at length. You know, the it was the first movie out of Agora Entertainment. We've only been around for about a year. So it was really important for us that we did something of high production value, but also something that would you know, catch people's attention. Mm -hmm. And I think we did that with this film. All right. Well, um, so as a writer, are you more influenced by Edgar Allan Poe or Clive Barker, for instance, or somebody else entirely? I'd like to tell you that you know, um, I'm influenced by horror films in general, but I'm not. I'm not a really big horror film guy. Um, I think you know movies like The Usual Suspects that Chris, Christopher McQuarrie wrote, uh, you know Shawshank Redemption. I think those are the kind of films I ultimately want to do. Again, because we were a young company, we wanted to come out and do a film we could shoot at a very particular budget that allowed us to um, you know maximize our production value, and that was the real reason behind doing a horror movie as opposed to okay, this is what I love to do. Uh, in all honesty, if I had my choice, I'd probably do comedies, which is what you know, I'm kind of starting to gear toward. Well. Um, so tell us about the director you worked with on the picture. Um, Joey Stewart uh, directed uh, the final, and I'd worked with Joey. Joey's been my AD on several of my films. He's a really smart guy, uh, really understands the art of filmmaking and his totality is, is not very specific to any one department. So Joey and I had a very good friendship, so when I gave him the initial pitch on it, he really liked the premise. We gave him the script, we worked some things out to make it cost efficient to shoot the movie. And uh, he was just a natural fit. He really understood what I was trying to do with the story. Again, it wasn't about gore. <clears throat> we, we were very analytical in the other films we looked at. We looked at movies like uh, Audition, which was a Japanese horror film that was really became a prototype of you know, long cinematic shots as opposed to quick cuts and things that you know, movies like Saw and Hostel kind of do. So we really wanted, again, telling the story was far more relevant than shocking the audience. So uh, that was something that Joey and I were very keyed in on. And, um, I, I think I picked the perfect guy for it. Yeah, now I got a tour of your facility here, which is very expansive and, and impressive, and a lot of the movie was filmed here on the sets, right? Yeah, um, the originally, uh, we were going to shoot the movie out at uh, my partner's lake house, um, and then through some tra tragic events, um, he passed on, and so we decided that, in respect for the family, that instead of shooting at the lake house, we would move the set here. Um, so we literally fabricated this set inside of our soundstage here, and uh, it gave us a lot of freedom to do the things we wanted to do because we could pull walls out and it gave us complete control and access. So, yeah, uh, I would say probably 80% of the film was shot here on location at our 
Town states, rather. Right. And then uh, other location shooting was done uh, whereabouts, right around the neighborhood? Yeah, we stayed really close to this area. Um, we shot at the uh, Arts Magnet here, uh, I forget the name of the uh, Booker T mm -hmm. High School. We shot there for a lot of stuff. And then, um, you know, some of it was just some residential houses and things like that. We used the exteriors, but uh, like I said, I would say 80% of it was shot here. So it was a really, it was a really comfortable shoot. We had a great cast, a um, lot of young actors. Um, very, very proud of them because a lot of these guys were some of their first projects, and they really vested themselves into it. And the more seasoned actors really work with them to make sure we were, you know, doing everything right. Gotcha. And where did you, how did you cast for the uh, roles, particularly the more uh, seasoned actors you're talking about? Yeah, we did, uh, Joey and I did basically casting here in Dallas and in L.A. Um, we picked most of the people from Dallas. Um, after the film, a lot of them moved to L.A. But uh, we brought in Joshua Washington from um, L.A. And Joshua played uh, one of the kind of neutral kids that everyone liked. And he had been an enemy of the state. He played Will Smith's son. So he's a little more seasoned, even though he's a young actor. And then we brought in Mark Donato, who's on Degrassi. He came in from Canada, and he did a fantastic job as Dane. And uh, so they were the, some of the more seasoned guys. And then, of course, we had some of the old actors that played the sheriffs and things like that. But we also had a lot of really young guys, uh, you know, Hunter and um, th those guys. Just did a really nice job of coming in and trying to blend in with the more seasoned guys. And uh, what I liked about them is they, you know, they listened. They were very intent on trying to deliver a really good performance, no matter how small the, the role was. Everyone really did something really special. Right. Now, uh, Horror Fest is January 29th. I think it's opening at, at theaters. Yeah, we're coming out in theaters January 29th. So if people, for some reason, whatever, can't make it to Horror Fest, is there going to be another way for them to see the final? Um, well, obviously not theatrical if you can't make it to the theaters, but the, the movie will be out by, uh, in I think it's going to be somewhere in uh, late March. It'll be uh, released by D, uh, DVD to, uh, through Lionsgate. So um, that's the setup we have is after Dark releases it theatrically in Lionsgate, will pick it up on DVD. So they'll be able to catch it after the release. Great. Well, uh, bottom line, why should people want to see the film? I think it's interesting. I think we made a very, uh, a very good film cinematically. I think it has a lot of uh, elements that will keep people interested in the story. Um, there's some very, very good performances in the film. And overall, I think if you really lean back and remove yourself from the emotion of what is what is happening on screen is a really intelligent story within it that you could understand how these kids have crossed this bridge to become to do some really demonic things is because they feel they've been picked on and they're actually this is revenge is kind of a weird term to use for it because it's usually like somebody good messing with somebody bad and then you have revenge but there's no really good or bad in this both parties are really guilty to this one the good kids who were ultimately tortured they they incited this. They turned these other good kids into bad kids. So it's I think it's an interesting look at that as opposed to most films that go, this is the good guy and this is the bad guy. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. We kind of say, these are the events and this is how we got here. 